objectification, if the narcissist was honest. If a lesser or mid-range narcissist was able to know why they behaved as they did, and with regard to seeing the victim as an object, this video would explain how they would explain it to you. Similarly, if the greater ultra who already knows that they treat you as an object took the view that they wanted to convey this to you, then this is what would be said. Dear victim, you want to be someone to my kind of me. That will not happen. You are a something to us, not a someone. I don't relate to you. Why should I? I regard myself as superior, elevated and special. The petty concerns which govern your life don't apply to someone like me. I don't do accountability. Certainly, I have some understanding of what it means to be you. After all, I have listened to you tell me so many times about how you feel, and I have watched you and others like you so often. I do not feel it, however. I can't put myself in your shoes. I don't want to, and even if I did, I am unable to do so, because I neither have that emotional empathy or the even stronger emotional contagion that you empaths experience. Yes, I can see the differences between you and her and him and them. I can see the contrasts in height, body shape. She has green eyes and you have blue eyes. He has no hair and he has dreadlocks. I recognise physical attractiveness. I see the different clothes that you wear, the variances in shoes worn, jewellery displayed and such like. I notice all of that. But that does not make you any more of a person to me. It is merely the distinction between a washing machine that is white and one which is silver. Take my television, which is placed at the far end of the main sitting room. It is a Samsung curved SUHD HDR dot smart TV 78 inch television that I primarily watch sport on. It provides me with a picture, which is in pin-sharp, crikey vision, with a scintillating array of colours. The sound is impressive, and even more so when it is wired up to my Sonos surround system. It all looks sleek and attractive. It delivers an outstanding display, and therefore delivers what I require of it. Take you as my primary source. I can see that you stand five foot nine inches in height, that you are slender with pale skin and long brown hair to the small of your back, which becomes slightly wavy towards the end. Your face is oval, your eyes are green, you look sleek and attractive. You are an outstanding display of physical attractiveness. I know all of this, but your primary purpose is to provide me with fuel and to submit to my control, for you to provide me with character traits and residual benefits. And, during the golden period, you deliver that which I require of you. You are no different to my television. You are there to provide a function. You are there to deliver in accordance with the prime aims, which are fuel, character traits, control and residual benefits. If you do, and you do so in a fulsome manner, you are a high-functioning appliance. If you do not, you are a malfunctioning one. You and the television are there to do things for me, because I am entitled to that. I press your buttons by seducing you, or later provoking you during devaluation, and you must submit to my control doing what I want, provide me with fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. At the time of the golden period, you are functioning well. You are high functioning, and thus you are my favourite appliance. I have many appliances, other objects, which spew out fuel in varying quantities and differing potencies. I have connected... All of these objective all of these objects to me, because again my objectification of you is also linked to the need to assert control. If I want to eat some toast, I place two slices of bread in my Alessi toaster and press the lever down. 
Adjust the relevant control to give him the degree of toasting required, and a minute or two later, up pops two perfectly toasted slices of bread. It works each and every time. I control it. It does what I want. It does not refuse to toast my bread. It doesn't toast only one side. It doesn't fire the bread back at me, or instead produce a different outcome altogether by presenting me with a leg of lamb. I expect and demand that you be equally compliant and effective. I don't understand why you shouldn't be that way. You're there to do what I want. I am entitled to receive the prime aims, and since I installed you as my prime resource, you should be delivering them repeatedly, consistently, and without interruption. I am not interested in the vagaries of your life, which impacts upon your ability to function, because of my sense of entitlement, my notion of superiority, and, of course, my incessant needs and demands. I'm not interested in the fact that children are making a demand on you. I'm not interested in the fact that you have a job to do. I'm not interested in the fact that you feel unwell. I'm not interested in the fact that you're running late. You are an object, and you are meant to operate as and when I require it. Objects are far easier to control. They are installed, powered, and they function. If they stop functioning, then they are thrown away and they are replaced. Accordingly, when you stop delivering in accordance with the prime aims, you suffer the same fate. I don't have time to repair you. You are put to one side, and a better, shinier, more effective model takes your place. How did I ever manage without it? Why did I put up with you as a faltering appliance for so long? You may look at your replacement and wonder why on earth that appliance has been chosen over you. It might be because you gave everything you could to us. It might be because you can see that you are more capable, more interesting, more intelligent and better looking than your replacement. Perhaps you are. Perhaps those distinguishing features are there. But you were not delivering in accordance with the prime aims. And your replacement is which means they are infinitely superior to you. You are dispensable. Ally the fact that we see you and others' objects with our necessity for performance, our lack of remorse and conscience, and you can understand, or maybe begin to understand, why we find it so easy to disengage with you and place you on the scrap heap and choose another appliance with such ease. If you end a relationship... You may be concerned to ensure that the other person isn't too devastated, that they're doing okay because even though you may not want to be in a formal relationship any longer, you do still care about the well-being of another human being. To me, that's pointless. Why use your energy dealing with something that's ineffective? It's an object. Time is being wasted. Your objectification makes it far easier for me to function. By regarding you as just another object which is there to perform for us, that is to be controlled by us, and can be readily replaced when the narcissist deems it necessary, we achieve our aims far more readily. Performance and control are key, and this is what objects do. Whether it is an ornament which looks beautiful and we can place where we want, to a motor vehicle which delivers us from A to B, or a dishwasher which provides us with clean and streak-free shining glasses, we control them all, and they perform. This objectification extends into how we regard different objects, for example, when you are seduced and embedded as the intimate partner prime resource, you are our most prized possession. You are the one which will give us the necessary positive fuel each and every day, in large amounts and with considerable potency. This means you will be looked after, you will be treated well, you will be paraded and shown off like some prized piece of art or an expensive necklace. You will be placed carefully on that pedestal, polished, cleaned and maintained. The tertiary source, which works in the garage where we fill up the petrol in our car, is like an old teddy bear. The narcissist always stays alone, receives a pleasant dollar of positive fuel as we feign interest in this person's humdrum life. We have known this person for years, and like that teddy bear, we see no need to throw them away, not yet, but nor do we regard them as being of any particular necessity for, maintain for maintenance. Accordingly, the corresponding teddy bear has an eye missing some stuffing is filling from one side, and the fur has faded. In the same way that one is careful with a delicate and expensive mirror, the narcissist will treat our appliances in the same way. Some can be kicked to one side, scuffed and stained, like a pair of old trainers. Others are handled with care until we decide otherwise. 
Our appliances and our fuel network are regarded and handled in differing ways. The trophy appliances, the primary source in the golden period, or the long-standing inner circle successful friends who are non-intimate secondary sources are displayed and shown off regularly. The much maligned familial non-intimate secondary source, a scapegoated sibling or child, is the hideous jumper that is only ever worn when it really has to be done and is otherwise derided and ridiculed. Our lieutenants are our tools, the devices which we depend on to do our bidding as they are deployed to achieve our aims. Our objectification of you is necessary for the purposes of maintaining control and achieving the prime aims. This objectification is easy to do because I have no empathy for you. I no sooner can relate to how an iMac feels as to how you feel. I have no concern about whether my Mont Blanc pen feels it's there to perform. I have a vested interest in you feeling for the purpose of providing fuel, but I am not concerned as to how you feel because I cannot empathise with you. This objectification manifests not just in how the narcissist will parade you as a trophy, devalue you without any concern for the impact upon you, and then how we disengage and replace you, but also in the way we interact with you. The use of pet names is a way of dehumanising you. We refer to you as her, she, he and him, rather than your actual name, stripping you of identity. We reject the legitimacy of your needs and desires by placing ours first. A fridge freezer has no aspirations, no life plan or goals, and we reject their applicability to you as well. This objectification appears in how we interact with you, especially during devaluation, as we say such things as just do it, do what I want, get on with it, stop disobeying me, you will do it or else. There is no asking, no politeness, no consideration given. We do not ask the washing machine if it wouldn't mind washing our clothes, so why would we ask you if you wouldn't mind doing something for us? You and everybody else, from our parents to our friends to our colleagues to our children, are all objects which are expected to do our bidding. Perform, and we will keep you. Fail, and you are replaced. Now... Why is that light flashing on your forehead?